Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast, My View on the View, where I make the views table relatable. I take the table dynamics and I relate those to our everyday lives. But this podcast is really not about the view, it's about me and you, because it's about life. And the view is my Trojan horse. So come on in, let's get started. Come on. So welcome back, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this special podcast today. So we learned on the show today, today being uh, Wednesday, December 15th, 2021, that Anna's mom has died. She has transitioned from this earthly life to whatever is next in the next life. And we just want to talk a little bit about this. I'm going to share a little bit from my own life. Most of you know my mom died last year in October of 2020. And I just want to encourage those of you listening who have lost a parent. So they let us know on the show today, Joy did, because Joy was moderating, that um, Anna, we will see Anna on the show tomorrow, Friday, because Friday's show is a pre-recorded show. She told us they recorded it some days early. Um, And if I'm not mistaken, The View is about to go on their winter hiatus. Um, And so they'll probably be gone for a week or two. Um, I think, I haven't looked into the schedule, but I think this is around the time they normally uh, pre-record shows and then they they go ahead and go on their break. So she was just letting everybody know that, listen, you're going to see Anna on the show Friday, but you know, she's not actually here and she's not going to be here for, you know, some time, maybe a few weeks, uh, maybe, you know, maybe a few days, just depending on whenever they come back. So we're all sending our prayers to Anna and her family. But it was just a few weeks ago in October that Anna actually first discussed her mom on the show and told the viewership that her mom was actually ill. And she actually told us, if you remember, and we're going to listen to it in just a second, that her mother had had her last rites given to her just a few days before Anna was there on the show. Now, for those of you who are listening who aren't really familiar with Catholicism, now, most religions um, have something like a last rites. It just goes by different things. But uh, last rites in Catholicism are the last prayers and menstruations given to many Catholics when possible shortly before they pass. Um, We know that a lot of people pass and they aren't able to have their last rites given to them because it's an unexpected death. Um, But I think... Um, how do I say this? We know that we don't have control over when we leave this earth or how we leave and things of that nature. Um, But there's a certain thing to when you can prepare. Like for those of you listening to me now and you have a, a parent that is ill and the doctors have said, you know, hey, we don't know. There's, there's no more we can do. Uh, or you have a parent that's right now on hospice care. So those, I think, who are able to prepare, um, and when I say prepare, you can never prepare for a parent dying. But what I mean is, you know, get things in order. Have last conversations. Say things that you need to say, and, and they say things that they need to say to you. That's what I mean by prepare. Prepare. Those people are so blessed, so blessed, because many people don't get that opportunity. So let's listen to this clip where Anna first shared with us that her mom was really, really sick. Well, I gotta tell you, I, I have, I've done so many things in my life and not done so many things in my life. I, re- I have regrets for things I've done, and I have regrets for things I haven't done. And this week I've been thinking a lot about it. You guys know I've told you all, yeah. my mom has been incredibly sick, uh, and she, she had her last rites given um, a few days ago and uh, and I really regret not having spent more time with her when she was healthy yeah. Yeah. but today she got out of ICU which yeah. is almost which is a miracle I don't want to call her every day yeah Now, on the show today, Joy also, um, excuse me, Sunny shared with us something that Anna posted on her Instagram. And I'm going to read this to you guys because uh, I recognize that so many of you are not on social media a lot, especially my international listeners. So she posted this on her social media, uh, a picture of her mom when her mom, of course, was healthy and youthful and just so, so beautiful. And she put this as her tribute. I wish you'd been able to enjoy health and your family longer. As your youngest, I'm grateful for the 50 years of unconditional love and support you gave me. Go in peace. We'll look after dad. Hug my brother for me. 
Um, as many of you may not know that Anna did have a brother that passed away many, many years ago. And she, she ended this tribute by saying, I'll miss you always and until we meet again. Now, let me just share my story. So last year, um, during the pandemic, my mom passed away. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar, you know, maybe you weren't with me when I first started the channel. When I first started on YouTube, which, of course, now the podcast is is a lot of places other than YouTube, I used to share a lot of personal things because I really didn't know any better, to be honest with you. I mean, I knew better, but, you know, when you're trying to establish a connection with your audience, you sometimes share personal things. And I had a situation happen, I won't go into it now, where someone let their curiosity about my life and family go too far. And so uh, the proper authorities had to be contacted. And that's when I learned that I really need to be very careful on YouTube. So I stopped saying my name. I stopped saying, you know, anything personal. Um, Every now and again, I may reference something. But when I do, I'm very strategic about it. Uh, I'm very much aware that everyone listening, that, excuse me, not everyone listening to the sound of my voice means me well. And that some people, of course, people want to know who you are. And people who've never seen me before, of course, they want to know what you look like. These are all normal, natural things. But some people let their natural curiosity go too far, where they start trying to find you. And then, well, I'm going to come to your home and I'm going to find out who you're, you know, whatever, you know, all these things. And so at any rate, um, so for those of you who are with me, Before I made that change, um, you know, I used to share with you guys that my mom and dad, you know, I grew up in a two parent home. My mom and dad were together literally until death parted them. They were together over 50 years. And so mama had been sick. She had been sick on and off since 2013. And it was really close in 2013. She almost died. She was in the hospital for several weeks. Um, and then she had to be in a nursing home for over a month and then things were much better and they allowed her to go home with my dad and all of us, you know, in terms of the children, we all live in different places in the U S. Okay. So, you know, that was a real strenuous time. And I think it was around that time that as a family, we really started having some conversations that, you know, were long overdue and needed to be had. And those things were done. And, and but we'd always been a family really that, you know, really we were just a no holds barred type family. That's how my mom and dad raised us. Speak the truth. Try your best to speak it in love. But don't don't lie. You know, just say it. You know what I'm saying? Be honest. You know, uh, your life is so much better when you just tell the truth and you tell people you love. Hey, this is the truth about what's happening with us, whatever the situation is. So at any rate, so mom's health had actually gotten better. She, um, the doctor had taken her off of most of her medications and she, uh, you know, I won't go into all the details, but she was so much better and we definitely didn't expect for her to die. And so, and neither did the doctors. So she passed on a Sunday. She was at home with my dad and, um, you know, she passed and I won't go in, like I said, into the, to the details of all of it. it had nothing to do with COVID. I will say that it was not COVID related at all. Uh, And we say she died at home because by the time the ambulance got there, they tried to bring her back. And, you know, we don't know where she was in terms of her consciousness. We just know when she got to the hospital, they continued to try to, you know, do some things and they they were not successful. So we say that, that, that we know of as a family, her last conscious thought was she was at home with my dad. And I will tell you, when I die, that's how I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go at home in my own home uh, with my spouse, you know, and you know, surrounded by the people I love. You know, I think that's really if you can, if you can, if you have anything to do with how you go, and some religions believe you do, um, that's that's gonna be my choice. But at any rate, so that was very hard. But I will tell you that the the wonderful thing about it was that. There was nothing left unsaid between my mom and I. Now, I can't speak for my other siblings, my siblings, but for me and mama. Matter of fact, our last conversation, (laughs) there was a weatherman on our local news who he was uh, like a fat person, but he was so handsome. And she and I used to talk about this guy. His name was Jesse. Oh, Jesse, mama, did you see Jesse today? You know, whatever, you know, because they just love Jesse. Her and my dad love Jesse, really, because Jesse was this news particular program. 
they hadn't had a black weatherman, you know, ever. So Jesse was the first black, but he was a young person, the first black weather uh, guy that they had. And so mom and dad, you know, my parents grew up in segregation. They went through, you know, all this stuff. And so they were just really, really just excited to see a black guy in this role because he, like I said, there never, ever, ever in this history of this station been a black weather guy. So of course they just really loved Jesse and, and then they got me into Jesse. And so I started, you know, watching Jesse's, you know, <laughs> newscasts and stuff like that. And so, um, for some reason, all of a sudden, you know, Jesse lost a lot of weight. And so our last conversation was, I had texted mama and I was like, mama, I saw Jesse today. Y'all didn't tell me cause I didn't watch him all the time. Cause I watched a different news program. Y'all didn't tell me he had lost a lot of weight and he sure looked good, you know? And so she called me and she said, my fingers aren't really working right. And this was actually just a few days before she died. Now at the time, I didn't know that. But she told me, my fingers aren't working really right. She said, so I'm calling you. She said, yeah, he has lost a lot of weight. And he doesn't look good. I said, yeah, he does. And we talked a little bit about Jesse. And I said, okay, well, I'll talk to you later. And she died just a few days later. And I still have that text message, you know, between us. You know, the text I sent her. And I have other texts that she sent me. uh, Because thank God I never erased text messages. So, you know, processing that, and it's been a year later, October was just a couple of months ago, it's been a year later that mama has been gone. And I will tell you guys that it has gotten a lot easier. And what makes it, I will tell you what makes it really easy for those of you who have your mom and dad still with you. Don't wait till someone is sick to try to say all the things you need to say, because they're already going through a great burden. You know, they're already in their own mind trying to come to peace with the fact that they're about to die. And so, you know, to put all this stuff on them, well, you didn't do this, you know, whatever conversations you need to have as the child of that person it's so much better to just have those conversations when people are healthy, you know, and, and we always think our parents can't handle the truth, you know, well, it doesn't really matter. It does matter. And if there are things that you need to say, if there are, um, you know, um, you know, things that went on that shouldn't, and you guys know, I used to work with abused children and families for 18 years, have those conversations. And I used to encourage people, write them a letter. Your parents can handle it. I promise you they can. We can, people can handle the truth. Okay, and so if you can't say it, write it, you know, Um, and so at any rate, so I just want to encourage anyone who still has their parents and they're in good health and, and, and sound mind, have the conversations, because I promise you when they leave, if you haven't, you're going to regret it. Now, I don't have any regrets, but I know people that do have regrets, but I'm not one of them. And I will tell you, I truly thank God for that. Mom and I were in a good place, Um, you know. We had had a great conversation. Our last conversation was a positive conversation. And there was nothing unsaid, you know, uh, between us because we always had these types of conversations. You know, if something was going on, if I didn't feel like she was supportive the way maybe to the level she could have been, I was always the child to tell her that because they encouraged us to do that, my mom and dad. So I'm going to let you guys go. Let's keep Anna and her family in our prayer, especially her father, you know. Losing a spouse, I think. I've never been in that situation, losing a spouse. But I think it's, it's very, very hard. I know my dad, you know, he he says he's okay. He says he's okay. But, you know, there are signs that, you know, it's very, very hard after you've been with someone for so long and your soul is tied to theirs. And even though they're, you know, you're still here, you feel like a part of you died when they leave. So thanks so much for tuning into today's podcast. Guys, we really enjoy Anna on the show and I look forward to seeing her whenever she comes back and hearing how she's doing. And for those of you who follow her on Instagram and Twitter on all social media, um, I'm sure she'll be giving updates on there as well. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I will talk to you guys on the next podcast.